Good day, students. I'll be a biology teacher for today. And the topic for today's lesson is reproductive health. By the end of the lesson, you will be able to name and discuss types of harmful traditional institution, female genital mutilation, FGM, explain how reproductive organs can be cared for, state the importance of prenatal care, list causes of infant mortality, give the full meaning of STIs, HIV and AIDS, state the causes, symptoms and prevention of STIs, HIV and AIDS, explain how STIs HIV and AIDS can be transmitted to foetus and infant. Reproductive health. Female genital mutilation, FGM, also known as female circumcision or cutting, is a traditional non-medical practice of altering or injuring the female reproductive organs often by removing all or parts of the external genitalia. External genitals include the clitoris, labia, mons pubis, and the urethral and vaginal openings. The traditional custom of ritual cutting and alteration of the genitalia of the female infants girls and adolescents persists primarily in Africa and among certain communities in the Middle East and Asia. On average, girls are subjected to FGM between birth and age 15. Types of FGM 1. Clitoridectomy 2. Excision 3. Infibulation or pharaonic circumcision. 4. Introcision. 5. Unclassified types of FGM. 1. Clitoridectomy. This involves the removal of the prepuce and the tip of the clitoris. This is the only operation which medically can be likened to male circumcision. 2. Excision. This involves the removal of the clitoris and often also of the labia minora. It is the most common operation and is practiced throughout Africa, Asia, the Middle East and the Arabian Peninsula. 3. Infibulation or pharaonic circumcision. This is the most severe operation involving excision plus the removal of the labia majora and the sealing of the two sides through stitching or natural fusion of scar tissue. What is left is a very smooth surface and a small opening to permit urination and the passing of menstrual blood. This artificial opening is sometimes not larger than the head of a match. 4. Introcision In this form of mutilation, when a girl reaches puberty, the old tribe, both sexes assembles, the operator an elderly man enlarged the vaginal orifice by tearing it downwards with three fingers bound with opossum string. In other districts, the perineum is split with a stone knife. 5. Unclassified types of FGM. This includes pricking, piercing, or incision of clitoris or labia, stretching of clitoris and or labia, 
cauterization by burning of clitoris and surrounding tissues, scrapping of the vaginal, introduction of corrosive substances into the vagina to cause bleeding or abs into the vagina with the aim of tightening or narrowing the vagina and other procedures which fall under the definition of FGM given above. We'll be back after the short break. You're welcome back students. We will continue from where we stopped. Traditionally, a local village practitioner or midwife is engaged for a fee to perform these procedures, which are done without anesthesia using a variety of instruments such as knives, razor blades, broken glass or scissors, not considering the health implications of using these instruments. Reasons for female genital mutilation the procedure has a lot to do with traditions and cultural beliefs. It is believed that cutting or removal of the tissues around the vagina will prevent women from having pleasurable sexual feelings. Those reasons range from cultural, religious to social. The harmful effects of female genital mutilation. FGM has no health benefit. Instead, it causes a lot of harm to the girls and women involved in many different ways. It involves removing and damaging healthy and normal female genital tissue, and this interferes with the natural functions of girls' and women's bodies. Infection can also come through the use of the various sharp objects or instruments that have been used. Immediate complications can include severe pain, shock, hemorrhage or bleeding, tetanus or sepsis, bacterial infection, urine retention, open sores in genital region and injury to nearby genital tissue. FGM is a violation of the human rights of girls and women. Care for the reproductive organs. General care for the reproductive organs. Eat a balanced diet that is high in fiber and low in fat. Drink plenty of water. Get regular exercise. Maintain a healthy weight. Get enough sleep. Avoid using tobacco, alcohol, or other drugs. Care for the female genitalia. Make vaginal washing part of your daily routine. Wash up to two to three times, especially during menstrual cycles. Do not use soap to wash the vulva. Do not scrub your vulva. And washing the vulva are better. Clean from front to back. Wear cotton underwear. Wear comfortable clothing. Care for the male genitalia. Wash genitals regularly to prevent accumulation of dirt and germs. Wear comfortable underwear and change underwear often. Gently wash the pennies with water each day when you are having your bath. This is sufficient to maintain good hygiene. If you have a foreskin, pull it back gently and wash underneath. If you don't wash underneath the foreskin correctly, a cheesy looking substance called smegma may begin to gather. Smegma is a natural lubricant that keeps the pennies moist. It is found on the head of the penis and other under the foreskin. If it builds up in the foreskin, it can start to smell. Stop you easily pulling back your foreskin and become a breeding ground for bacteria. 
This can cause redness and swelling of the head of your penis called balanitis. Importance of prenatal or antenatal care. Having a healthy pregnancy is one of the best ways to promote a healthy birth. Getting early and regular prenatal care improves the chances of a healthy pregnancy. This care can begin even before pregnancy with a pre-pregnancy care visit to a health care provider. Prenatal care involves the steps taken by a pregnant woman to ensure a healthy pregnancy. We'll be back after the short break. You're welcome back students. We'll continue from where we stopped. Prenatal care includes medical checkups by a midwife or doctor for signs that the pregnancy is going well, which usually include a physical exam, weight check, and providing a urine sample. Depending on the stage of the pregnancy, healthcare providers may also do blood tests and imaging tests, such as ultrasound exams. The recommended schedule for antenatal checkups is, as soon as a woman thinks she is pregnant, every other month during the first five months of pregnancy, once every month from the sixth month to the eighth month, every week during the ninth month. Causes of infant mortality. The following are some of the causes of infant mortality. Bat defects, preterm bat and low bat weight, maternal pregnancy complications, sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, Injuries, example suffocation, acute respiratory infections, intrapartum related complications, congenital anomalies, diarrhea, bat asphyxia, STIs, HIV, and AIDS. STIs, sexually transmitted infections, can also be referred to as STDs or VDs, sexually transmitted diseases or venereal diseases. These are infections that are passed from an infected individual to another person during sexual intercourse or other sexual activities. HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Causes of STIs. Some STIs such as syphilis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea are caused by bacteria. Other STIs such as pubic lice are caused by parasites. STIs caused by these two disease agents can be cured. Other STIs are caused by viruses. This includes ARPS, genital warts, HPV, and HIV. This cannot be cured, but their symptoms can be treated through medication. General symptoms of STIs for both men and women. Sores, rashes, bumps or blisters on the vagina, penis, mouth or rectum, burning or painful urination or bowel movement, frequent urination, itching or swelling of the genitals, swelling or redness in the throat for people engaging in oral sexual activities, symptoms in women only, unusual discharge or odor from the vagina, lower abdominal pains, burning or itching around the vagina, symptoms in men only, drip or discharge from the penis that may be yellowish 
pus like or whitish, inflammation of the epididymis, prevention of STIs, abstinence. That means not engaging in any sexual behavior that will lead to the sharing of body fluids, being faithful to one uninfected partner after both of you have been tested negative to STIs. How STIs, HIV and AIDS can be transmitted to fetus and infants. Some STIs, such as syphilis, cross the placenta and infect the baby in the womb. Other STIs like gonorrhea, clam chlamydia, hepatitis B, and genital apps can pass from the mother to the baby as the baby passes through the birth canal. HIV can be passed to babies either while in the womb or as the baby is being born. There is also a risk of transmission through breast milk. Students, answer the following questions. Name types of female genital mutilation. How do you personally care for your reproductive organ? Why is prenatal or antenatal care important? What are some of the causes of infant mortality? State the full meanings of STIs, HIV, and AIDS. Bye-bye, students.